Hey guys, Kev here, and I want to do a review overview on the Benchmade Narrows. So, this is a knife that came in the other day, and I was not too hot on it. If you watch the unboxing, I wasn't too thrilled on it. And it's still not my favorite knife. It's still not my cup of tea, but I've bonded with it a little bit. I do quite like it. I think it has a purpose um for the right person now obviously that person's gonna be spending a lot of money on knives because this is a 530 dollar bench made it's an m390 and titanium it's razor thin it has a axis lock but it's more of a axis style lock there's some kind of a compression spring in here and that is what uh gives you the detent so to speak um it's pretty interesting honestly I don't know exactly how it works, and it clearly does not give you the best spring tension, um, but I've kind of figured out how to deploy this reliably, and that makes me like the knife more, you know? And it's got the classic blue accents, like a bu uh, bug out. I don't know why I said that. I don't think the bug out does. There's one, I think, uh, but it's kind of a, a Benchmade look to me, right? Um, I, I do want to mention the Anthem. The Benchmade Anthem is an integral knife. They don't make it anymore. And I think it was like $400 new. Now, maybe $360 at one point, too. I know it, it was an older knife. It had been around and everything. But that was an integral. Titanium integral. That is a lot of milling. Uh, milled clip, all that stuff. And I believe it was in... Um, shit, was it in M320CV? Uh, it, was in, it was in a super steel of some sort. i um, pretty sure it was like 20CV or something. And it was like three, 360, 400. This is 530, and it's just slaps. Um, the biggest issue I have with this knife is it feels incomplete. Um, a lot of people say, yeah, it's a super thin knife, and that's awesome. There's no flex. And yeah, sure, there isn't. But it feels like a knife that the liners got stripped off of, you know? So if you take... I don't know. I don't have a great example here. Um, try to. I'm trying to find something that's like a liner lock almost, right? Um, I don't know if this would make sense. No, these are uh, nested. Um, okay, here. Here's like a... Oh, yeah. Let's use the Kaiser Escort. Okay, here's a Kaiser Escort because it's got a clutch lock on it. So this has uh, micarta slabs or uh, scales on top of steel slabs, right? So if you just took these scales off, right? Um, actually, hey, let's do a little experiment. You guys want to do an experiment with me? Probably not, but we're going to do it anyway. Um, looking like a T8. Just so I can show you what I'm talking about, because the cool thing about the clutch lock is you can actually take the scales off you can take the pivot out, show you, and the scale will come off, right? And then you can swap around the uh, axis spring to make it stronger, weaker, whatever you want to do. But, like, let's say you took the scales off of this, right? We could even take it off of this side. Probably not the best idea, but you know what? I don't, I don't do great ideas. That's not my thing. I'm more of a... Uh, screw this let's try it guy let's make a point kind of guy <laughs> uh aka a dumbass I'm a, i am a dumbass um by the way i want to give a big shout out to house of blades so house of blades was kind enough to send me this benchmade narrows to review i did pick up a um affiliate link to them so I want to make sure that I give them credit. Here's one of their stickers, House of Blades, Knife Shop, Fort Worth, Texas. So um, check the link down below. There's actually a discount code, Lefty10. will get you 10% off your order at House of Blades. Now, it's not going to work on every product like Jack Wolf. I'm not sure if Benchmade participates, but if they do, you'll get 10% off. So this is actually already set to the strongest setting you can get. Uh, with these springs you could put in um, stronger ones if you want which I do have some but this video is not about that the video is about the fact that this feels like a knife without scales so it's like they took the liners off see now we're the same thickness so essentially 
Let me actually put the pivots in so that it's... And I got to be careful, obviously, with the uh, spring there. But I'm just trying to prove a damn point up in here. And, uh, you know, I'll go to great lengths to prove my point. That's a fact. Uh, I don't think that wants to tighten because there's um, the other one that needs the scale there to uh, accept. just want to get it kind of closer here. I just want to get them even, basically. There we go. Now they're even. Not quite centered, but... Um, trying to make it feel like a completed knife and not feel janky. So... That's all. Just to prove my stupid point that I'm taking my time with. Okay. Alright. So, here is... Your escort with no scales on it, right? It's, hopefully they don't fly. It's not falling apart. Steel liners, I mean, a little bit of flex, but not a ton. Action works just fine, right? I could throw a clip on here, and it would work just fine. Assuming I could hide these uh, Omega Springs or tuck them under here. So that's essentially what they did, was just make a knife without scales. It has the liners, right? So, I, I don't know. To me, it's not, like, earth-shatteringly thin. Like, this is actually thinner, I think, over here. So I think Kaiser could pull this off if they wanted to. Pretty easy. They just have to hide that somehow. Or put another mechanism in. Uh, I don't know why I cared to show you that. Um, I'm going to put this away so I don't have to put it together for you, but um, on camera... But I just wanted to kind of show that to prove a point uh, that makes no sense. Because um, that's how I roll. And so, this knife doesn't impress me that it's this thin. Like, that doesn't make me go, oh my god, it's so thin, guys. It's so thin. Um, there is a little bit of flex. Um, same is really on that steel over there. So, um, I do like the tabs on here. Uh, they are very inviting. Um, they are very nice to grab. And I like that they're on an angle down like that. Very cool in my opinion. I love that. Um, I did not flip the clip because I just didn't want to mark up the other side or anything. Um, you have an S, sorry, uh, an M390 blade steel on here. And it is razor sharp. They did a great job with the sharpening on this. The grind looks good to me. Um, I'd hope so on a knife this expensive, but, you know, um, I love Benchmade's, um, finish on this blade. Uh, it's kind of got a stone wash down here and then a vertical satin up top. I think that looks really nice. Um, I do want to note that I had to tighten these studs. So after the unboxing i noticed that they were literally loose and i just had to take a t8 um like this or no t6 sorry like this and i just you know cranked down that side and then went over to this side same thing and they seem to be good now but they should not have been loose in the first place the centering is way off on this knife um yet there is no play uh well, maybe maybe a little bit but that could be just flexing completely there um so i'm not messing with that and it is way off so i mean i'd have to loosen it maybe i don't know, it depends with it with a crossbar lock which what would happen if i tightened or loosened um, but it should be right about there and i think on a 500 hundred dollar knife it should be centered you know um i was giving my sharpshooter jack shit for not being centered i mean look that's over to this side it's clear um love this knife but it deserves the criticism for being off center this is 530 dollars. that's you know 350 or whatever um it's damn near rubbing so uh the clip is good you got a standard sort of bug out clip would have been nice to see a milled clip on a 500 hundred dollar knife right um I'm not a big fan of the scales. Like I said, they feel like just liners on a knife that they, you know, um, didn't want to throw scales on. The ergonomics are okay. Um, I've gotten used to them a little bit. 
and I don't mind them too much. Um, it is thin and everything, but I feel like I, I was getting used to it on my uh, barley, or I'm sorry, I am used to it on my barley, and that's 0 0.31. This is a little bit thinner, but um, this feels really good in the hand. It has the choil. I think the handle in general is ergonomic, which really helps, right? Where this handle in general is just, it's not really. Um, it's a little tall and then stupid thin, and it, I don't know. Um, this has the back spring, so you don't feel like any kind of uh, pinch or corners up here. You don't feel those areas like that. Uh, same on the inside. They're not knocked down all that well in Chamfered. Um, you can't choke up, which sucks. Um, you know, that would have been really nice to be able to choke up on this knife. Considering how small it is, you assume, or sorry, how thin it is, you assume it's not going to be used for hard use, right? You're going to use it to, you know, cut apples and, and open packages and EDC, right? You're not going to be doing hard use. So you should be able to choke up on it. Or, you know, you can get into a pinch grip, but it's kind of hard because of the the way the handle is. It's kind of hard to do this and get it up to the tip. So um, you're kind of stuck back here for that kind of stuff. Just not the best. Now, I didn't personally use this because this is not my knife. It's House of Blades knife. It's $500. I just didn't want to mess with it. Um, but I, you know, I uh, simulated cutting and... Um, you know, it feels like if you had something soft, like you weren't cutting thick cardboard, you could choke up onto this point right here and kind of get through stuff like paper and whatnot. Um, you can also grip it back here and do that. Now, I would always catch the choil if I did that. That's just how I am. I always get caught in the choil, which is why I love choils, because I block that area. Um, but I think it would be fine for EDC, you know. Um, I just don't, it's obviously not going to be good for any type of hard use or anything like that. Um, we should talk about the action. So the detent, like I said, is just very minuscule. It doesn't really exist, but that's not anything new for, say, a crossbar lock. You do have knives like the clutch lock knives from Kaiser that implement some kind of strong spring system so you can get a detent sort of feeling. Now, uh, normally you get something like this, right? This is very bench matey. It's a crossbar lock. Um... And you have to basically create the pressure yourself. So you have to kind of give it a wrist flick, right? This is on washers. Um, and if you give it enough gas, it'll fly out. But if you do, you know, my trick where you just kind of break the detent, uh, there's no way. It's, it's just not going to deploy for you. So you have to put some effort into it. And that's okay, right? And then closing, swing it down a little bit since it's on washers. Um... But once I got used to this knife, I actually quite enjoy the action. It, it has a nice little pop to it when it locks up. Um, now, I do feel like I'm slipping a little at times, and I do feel required to give it a little wrist. If I give it a little wrist, I get a real nice pop. Versus trying to do it without a uh, wrist. I can, but I almost feel like I'm going to slide off and end up cutting myself down here. But you can do it. But you can see how weak it feels. Now, maybe someone with larger hands would be able to do it better. And if I give it enough, I can get it to do it pretty well. Uh, I'm kind of, I'm trying to go straight up, almost backwards when I flick it. Um, because if you go out, <laughs> it's just nothing there. You have no spring. You have to go up. And you have to try to, like send it straight up basically um left-handed i don't have the clip to help me disengage or flip or anything so um it's a little different but i can give it that little flick and the push with the thumb and it works really well the reverse flick so this one took me a minute you know in the in the uh unboxing i was doing this and like i just couldn't you know it doesn't have that that spring tension to really get it um, also the slow roll is absolutely wonderful. It just feels really good to click that out. Sorry, again, I don't have the clip over here to kind of grab onto. So if I show you right-handed, I can grab the clip, slow roll out, and then I have the clip there to swing it down. But it just feels really satisfying. I enjoy that. So the reverse, like I learned, you just line it up 
line it up underneath and you just got to go for it. Like, don't be a bitch. Don't do this. Don't try to ride it out. Just fucking be a man. You just be a man and flick that bitch. And I'll tell you, so she said, I'll tell you, when you do that, oh, it feels good. It feels very satisfying when you do that. Now, you're going to have occasions where you miss it, and you do this, and you're like, ah, damn it. Uh, because you're literally flicking from under the stud. Like, I'm not on the stud flicking. I mean, you can do that. I'm kind of under it, and then I'm smacking the stud on the way up. It's hard to do it on camera, but you see that? Like, I'm literally under the stud when I start, and then I flick through the stud. Um, this works right-handed. Again, on camera, it's harder. Um, when you're not, like, restricted in an area, it's a lot easier. But um, So I've kind of gotten the hang of the knife a little bit, and I don't mind it all that much in terms of the action. Um, it's not my favorite or anything, but, like, I could get by with this. I could get by with this. Oops. See? Um, no clip to grab. But I think there's some good here, right? And... The price point is where everybody gets all riled up, right? Um, you're not going to catch me flipping out about the price. You know, I've mentioned it a couple times in the video and said, for a $500 knife, I should have this or that, right? But, you know, I think that's fair. But at the same time, um, this is a rather large company in Benchmade. Um, they've been putting out knives for a long time. They have a, a pretty rabid fan base and... Apparently, they know what their customers will spend on knives. So, if they want to charge $530 on this, go right ahead. You know, um, am I going to buy one? No, I'm not going to buy one. But someone else will. Um, a bunch of someone else's will probably buy this knife. It'll probably be a knife that uh, is a limited run, and then people will be talking about it a year from now, like it's some... Uh, cool ass knife, and, and you know you'll be seeing them on the secondary for eight hundred or something. Um, and Benchmade, you know, they have to make the knives, they have to sell the knives to dealers, um, and then they have to pay their employees. They, I assume, pay their employees insurance, and they have a four hundred one k plan and all that shit. Um, and when you have that many employees, and they're making livable wages, and they have insurance and benefits. Well, guess what? Your product costs more. That's just how it works. Um, so, yeah, if I had this knife made, right? If you took, here we go. Let's say the Devo Knives Growler. This is made by Shank Knives in Idaho for Devo Knives, right? And then we're going to be selling it. And I'll, I'll venture to guess the price point is going to be similar. Uh, we might be a little under that. It might be over. I'm waiting on the quote. But I'm guessing I'm ballparking somewhere around 500 bucks. This is 530. So where are the differences here, right? Like this is Magna Cut at 63. This is M390. Both are super steels. I'd say Magna Cut at that HRC is a little more premium, a little more sought after, but I don't know if it's more expensive or anything to do, right? Um, this is titanium contoured. Uh, it's milled, and then it has um, a camo carbon inlay in it. Um, it's on bearings. It's a, a frame lock or a bolster lock, however you want to put that. It has a milled titanium pocket clip, uh, hardware from tie connector. I assume it's pretty sure it's titanium. Um, yeah, so you have a steel insert and everything. It's a different type of build, right? Um on this, you have M390, you have, um, I believe, yeah, it's titanium hardware. Um, the clip, I don't know how they do the clips. I don't know if they're titanium. Maybe they are titanium. Are they? No, that's steel. Uh, so I don't know how they do that. But uh, whatever. It has the axis bar lock. It's not contoured. It has standoffs versus a titanium backspacer. Again, it has a steel clip, kind of throw-on clip versus a milled clip. Um, but, you know, you're in the same ballpark. Premium steel, titanium handle, right? Titanium hardware. Um, both are going to be around 500 bucks. So, we don't have employees 
we don't have insurance to pay for and benefits and all this other shit. Um, we obviously have to pay the OEM to make it. There's our big difference. I think you get more here. I think this is a better knife. Um, for sure, this is a better knife, in my opinion. But they're not worlds apart or anything. So, I don't know. I feel like we get really caught up in this price thing. And yet, we see companies like Koenig and Rose and uh, Oz Machine Company and, and Grimsmo and whatever. And they're charging $900 whatever um they're smaller shops but they have employees they you know have the whole gamut as well um and they're charging way more why well their product is better they have more that goes into it they have contouring they have um probably better steel better heat treat on the steel i don't know about that um better grinds right better finishing on stuff uh, more and uh, more intricate hardware and, and things like that. Backspacers instead of standoffs. Milled clips instead of steel. Um, the list goes on. Uh, more precise, I would say, right? Their knives come fucking centered. So, I, I just think that the, the this price is way too high thing is just a... I don't know. I don't think it's that high. I think it's a U.S.-made knife in titanium and M390. Um, you know, it costs about what a hinderer costs. A Chris Reeve costs. Maybe it's not your style. Maybe this doesn't make sense to you. But it has the same kind of build. And it's around the same price. So, I, I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm not going to cry about the price on this. What I will cry about is that I just don't like the knife all that much, you know? But for those of you that do, for those of you who want one of these, think it's cool and it fits into your style of uh, knife collecting or carry or whatever, I think it's actually a pretty cool knife. Um, so this is a very conflicted video. I have negatives, of course, but I think in the end, I like this knife and I think it's a good knife. Um, so I'm not going to sit here and dog on it. And, uh, I'm not going to sit here and tell you to run away from it. I think if you like it, you should get it. If you can afford this and you like it, I think it's good. So that's where I'm at. Um, check out House of Blades. Thank you to them. I'm going to get this back to them. Um, check them out for other knives. You know, you don't have to buy this knife. Um, but if you're buying some other knives or whatever, and um, you want to help brother out, use my link down there and use my code LEFTY10 at House of Blades. And I would appreciate it. Big shout out to Chris over there at House of Blades. He made this happen for me. So thank you very much, Chris. I appreciate you letting me check this out. I'm going to get this back to you now. Um, I love you guys. Truly and dearly. Don't take yourselves too seriously. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. And I will catch you later.